I'm Corey Duckmanton from Duckmanton Ag. Me and my partner Diane have been operating now for, oh, this is our seventh season. Yeah, we used to be up in North Canterbury and now move, yeah, moved down to Selwyn District, uh, out Leeston way, concentrating on uh, cultivation and, and drilling. We plant anything from small seeds like clover and grass seeds, plant green beans for waddies, broad beans for waddies, all your, your wheat, barley, all your cereals, oats, green feed oats, um, a lot of kale and rape crops and that go in for dairy cows. A lot of regrassing in the springtime mainly, a little bit in the autumn, uh, regrassing paddocks for dairy farmers. A lot of vegetables in that grown down here too because it's quite close to the coast and do anywhere between two and a half thousand hectares of drilling and about six, seven hundred hectares of precision planting. Yeah, I'm pretty busy <laughs> most of the time and um, yeah, Diane, she does a lot of the a lot of the cultivation work, apart from the ploughing and the drilling. Gets the ground prepared and keeps in front of me for, for drilling, so we don't have a huge amount of tractors to be able to call on to, like if one breaks down, we can't just go and hook on to another one and keep moving, you know, so all our tractors have a have a use and um, if they're not going then we're not bringing in the money or getting the, the customers jobs done for them so we decided to venture on and have a look at another brand and and try and find some better service and yeah managed to find that through through power farming yes yeah, Simon Jackson our, our salesman and, and a friend of ours um, yeah he's helped us out quite considerably and um, helped us out when when things were down happy to come out on weekends, Sunday afternoons, things like that. There was always someone on call to service things, always being done on time. I just let them know when I'm so many hours out, they're usually there within Kiwi of when things are needing done and it just helps keep everything operating smoothly. Yeah, we started with the, with the 6165 RC shift, pretty high spec tractor, front suspension, cab suspension, eye monitor, probably the, one of the highest spec RC shifts that they had floating around. Just runs our precision planter. Nice light tractor. Yeah, power farming Ashburton built up a, an aftermarket hitch to mount the, the front hopper on. Yeah, it runs the, the Cavernland 16 row planter nicely. Got into a 9340 for our big cultivation tractor. Had a wee issue with, with one of our other tractors and um, we decided to yeah, go for the 9340 and, and see how that went. And that once again has been, been really good. Yeah, Diane loves it. She's basically the main operator of that tractor. I think that's got about 1,600 hours on it now, a bit over 18 months. Yeah, just recently purchased the new the new 8280. This paddock that we're in, I counted 13 AB lines that I had to put in around the, around the boundary. It's probably one of the worst paddocks you could come and see me in. But <laughs> set up and, and actually recording the boundaries and, and recording the AB lines and everything like that is, yeah, piece of piss, you can go right around the outside of a paddock in 10 minutes and you got all your AV lines and everything in there. And with running RTK, we're not getting any movement. So I can drill my in internal area of the paddock first and then come out to the headland at the end and, um, and yeah, all my lines haven't shifted. I'm still up against the fence and running section control through the, through the eye monitor as well. So the drill's automatically turning on and off on our internal headland line. It's a nice square paddock. I'll be bang on to my GPS boundary. If I get a bit of a triangle, it might be only 0.2 of a hectare more. Just obviously there's a wee bit of overlap when you're coming, coming across, but if you weren't using section control, you, sometimes you can end up with half a hectare or more of um, extra extra seed used. It's, it's very good on fuel. We're just working out before. It's, it's just drilling in cultivated ground. It's using about 4.6 litres a hectare and averaging about 13.1 litres per hour. You know, it's not really working all that hard drilling. Get into some direct drilling where, where I've got to put some peas or something in the ground next spring. That'll tell a different story. I'd say she'd be up around the, you know, mid 30 litres per hour, pulling harder. So yeah, on average, I think, yeah, definitely, definitely more fuel efficient than what we've been used to in the past. And now running three of them with the price of fuel as it's been, it's definitely got to be a, a saving for us and, and help us help us get through. In other words, oh, we've had the odd little uh, odd little set too, like you do with everyone else. It's just when pressure comes on and um, 
you want some stuff done, but it's, that's part of business, you know, everyone's under pressure and I've got the pressure from the farmers, you know, they've got the pressure from me, so that puts pressure on all three of us. But yeah, other, other than that, power farming have been, been great. Ring Simon or ring the service department and I'll always get, I'll always get someone on the end of the phone, whether it's during the week or, or at the weekends. You're not speaking to an after hours service, you're actually speaking to the mechanic that's on call and the guy that's actually coming up to see you. You're not having to go through you know, an after hours service and then they're having to try and contact the person on call and they see the person, they see the after hours service trying to ring them and they don't answer the phone. So yeah, very happy and, and all with, um, with Power Farming.